Hey folks, today we are talking about jerkbait style plastics. So often people consider jerkbait style plastics to be primarily a snapper bait or a reef fishing plastic for offshore fishing. But jerkbaits come in a stack of different sizes and they're versatile plastic that is suitable for a stack of different species from lakes to rivers and estuaries and into the offshore fishing as well. So today I'm gonna to break down the Z-Man jerkbait range, looking at some of the key models in the range and how we might rig and fish those different plastics. So kicking things off with our little 3.75 inch streaks. So this is a compact jerkbait profile. It's a nice, fine, thinner style of jerkbait. And so there you go, straight away you've got a plastic that is suitable for not just snapper, it's an excellent inshore snapper plastic, but it's also suitable for brim, bass, flathead, and a stack of other species that you'll find in the river and estuary. The thing that, that tells jerkbaits apart from other styles of plastics is generally that tail section. So we've got our paddle tail plastics, we've got our curl tail plastics with a lot of action built into that tail. Jerkbaits tend to have very little action built into the plastic. So the tail is often just a straight tail that is split or sometimes a pin tail, so just a single tail. So you apply the action to the plastic, hence its name jerkbait. You jerk it, you twitch it, you hop it, you move it, you supply the action to the plastic. So in that sense, it's quite versatile. You can fish it slow and hop it. You can fish it faster and more twitchy. You can speed it up and wind it fast for pelagic species. So a versatile plastic. And in this small plastic, I generally like to rig it. It fits beautifully on a 2.0. I know guys will fish it on a hidden weight system. They'll fish it on a tournament series finesse right down to a size two and a one and that sort of thing for chasing brim. However, it rigs beautifully on a 2.0 for general estuary fishing where you might be getting tailor, salmon, flathead, trevally, all sorts of a mixed bag of species. And I often fish that on a 2.0 in the headlock series of jig heads. Again, when we're looking at our headlock series, We've got the fine wire, the Headlocks Finesse, and we've also got the heavy wire, which is the HD, the Headlocks HD. Telling them apart, we've got that light blue on the top, black on the bottom on the Finesse, and it says L after the hook for light. On our HD, it's reversed, the colors, so we're black on top, we're blue on the bottom, and you'll find a H or an XH after that hook size, and that signifies that that's a heavy duty hook. So the light wire stuff is perfect for your brim, flathead, bass, fishing light gear, light drag settings. And if you're around structure or you're wanting to target species that are more damaging to your jig heads and want to tow you back into that structure, go for that heavy wire hook. That gives you more stopping power to extract that fish out of cover. For if you're a beginner, you might want to start with that heavy hook. And then as you get more feel for your plastics and for fighting the fish, you might step down to that lighter wire hook to maximize your penetration. Both chemically sharpened black nickel hooks, so quality hooks on those. So that's a great way to fish that little jerk bait is on those finesse and HD headlocks jig heads. Also, if you're looking for something a bit different in terms of a colored head with 3D eyes, you can check out that Demons jig head. So the Demons is a painted head with 3D eyes that allows you to match the plastic, to match the hatch, or to put a completely different colored head on there so it really pops and is a strike trigger for fish. So check out those Demons as well. Again, I've got that in a 2.0 because it fits beautifully in that 3.75 inch streaks. Finally, don't be afraid to fish them weedless as well. So a lot of people straight away th are thinking snapper plastics. No, this plastic will catch a bunch of different species and they think of it on a standard jig head. But weedless rigged, this plastic can be twitched and walked and it can glide and excellent for picking the shallow weed beds and those sorts of things for flathead. So here, for example, I've got it on a snake locks jig head. So that head weight will sit on the bottom and the buoyancy of the tail will lift that plastic up off the bottom and wave it around with the water movement. So that 3.75 inch streaks on a, what do we got here, number 1.0. So a 1.0 in a snake locks finesse. Fits pretty nice, you could probably go up to a 2.0 if you needed to. And the softness of that elastic plastic allows it to clear easily. So that's been a great plastic for me. I've caught a bunch of flathead and that sort of thing on it. Uh, but it also excels for pelagic. So lots of people chase mackerel and tuna and that sort of thing when the bait's really small, fishing that 3.75 inch streaks. Stepping up from that, we have the new size newer addition in size to the center jerk shads range. So five inch and seven inch center jerk shads, extremely popular, brilliant offshore plastic. The smaller version, the four inch, when I first saw it, I was like, boom, this is gonna be awesome in the rivers and estuaries. And it has turned out to be so. I've got Mulloway, Snapper, a bunch of different species on it, some big trevally in the estuaries eating that four inch center jerk shad. So 
Difference between the 3.75 and the 4 inch, you'll see the bulk of the plastic increases. So it gives you that larger profile of a bait fish and that's centered with Procure in the packet, ready to rock and roll. So that four inch center jerk shad is a dynamite bait for general estuary work, flathead, trevally, jewfish, snapper, all sorts of species. Uh, available in a stack of cool colors. And generally I will fish that on a HD jig head in a 4.0. So that's a Headlocks HD 4.0 is perfect in that four inch center jerk shads for your general estuary work. Don't forget also that weedless option. And how cool is that? That's on a Chinlocks SWS. So it has that belly weight on the hook. And that plastic, we can basically walk it. We can walk it through the weed, we can pause it, we can hop it, we can flick it, we can, rear, we can pick apart those weed beds and also flick it in around the mangroves and that sort of thing for a bunch of different species. So don't forget, even though there's no action built into these things, it doesn't mean we can't put it on a weedless jig head and twitch it and hop it as we would like that plastic to behave in the water. So deadly on a weedless jig head as well. So that's our small models, our 3.75 streaks, our four inch center jerk shads. Then we step up into the five inch range. So in terms of five inch, that five inch center jerk shad is an absolute gun lure. It's probably one of the most popular offshore lures that you can fish, but it's also effective in the estuaries on Mulloway, Flathead, a bunch of other species, and you'll find some big flathead get caught on that guy there, as well as snapper and Mulloway and Trevally and other species. So that five inch center jerk shads traditionally we rig it on a Headlocks HD jig head in a 5.0. Fits perfectly on the 5.0. You will find a bunch of photos popping up across social media and, and lots of info from people fishing them who fish them on a 6.0. So you go from a Headlocks 5.0 to a 6.0, it's a heavier, stronger hook. So for those guys, say in Harvey Bay chasing tuna, big golden trevally, a bunch of other species that, that are very, very strong fighting fish, they will up, up that 5.0 to a 6.0. Traditionally for snapper and those sorts of things, that 5.0 is a good starting point in a Headlocks HD jig head. Mixing it up a bit, you can add some flash and vibration to that plastic. So this is a bit of a secret for some snapper guys. Uh, that Revlox jig head, the underspin style jig head with that blade mounted underneath the plastic, that creates flash and vibration on the sink, on the retrieve, even put the rod in a rod holder and leave it sitting just above the bottom with that blade spinning with the water movement as the boat drifts and that sort of thing. So check out that Revlox if you're looking to mix it up and try something different when that bite gets, gets a little bit tougher. And also the new, the big eyes. So TT Lewis big eyes jig head. So a painted jig head with a big eye in it. So a lot of anglers consider the eye of a bait fish to be a, a strike trigger for fish. So these big eyes are built with a big eye in there as a strike trigger to attract fish. So again, with that painted jig head, you may choose something to match the plastic. You may choose something to match the bait fish. You might choose something that's a totally different color that pops. Or in this case here, I'm fishing this plastic deep. So I've gone with the black head with the glow eye. So I'm getting the benefits of that glow eye when I'm fishing that plastic down deep. So that's the big eyes jig head. And a nifty trick, there's quite a few guys that catch some solid barra up north fishing that five inch center jerk shads on a weedless jig head. So there it is on a Chinox SWS. So again, we've got that belly weight to help keel the plastic and that allows us to walk that plastic or to hop it, twitch it, shake it. We can flick it, skip it right up in those snags where the fish are and being super soft and flexible, fish bites it, clears the plastic from the hook and away you go. So I've even seen some impoundment guys catching big barra on those flicking them and twitching them over the top of the weed beds and, and snags and that in the impoundment. So it gets a really nice glide to it on the fall. So if you're looking for something different, check out that Chinox SWS for your five inch center jerk shades as well for shallow water work and fishing around snags and weed beds. Another five inch option is the streaks. So this, the five inch streaks differs from the center jerk shad in that the center jerk shad has a split tail, whereas the streaks has a pin tail, a single tail on the end of that plastic. And it's a pretty crazy plastic. You hold it in your hand and you're flat out holding that tail from moving. It, it doesn't take much to move it at all, which makes it excellent for slow hopping, twitching presentations, bouncing it around for flathead and snapper and that sort of thing. But it absolutely excels. It is the go-to Harvey Bay lure, for example, for tuna and other pelagic species while also catching reefies. And that's because you high speed this five inch streaks and that tail gets a real tight shimmy up to it that fish can't resist. But being a plastic, you can allow it to fall slowly in below the schools of fish where they're feeding and pick up other species. It's a, it's a very versatile presentation from top to bottom. Rig it, rig it 
up light, bring it heavy, and you can cover that whole water column. So again, like our five inch center jerk shads, we're pretty much rigging it on the same jig head. So it's a Headlocks HD with that brutally strong mustard black deepfield chemically sharpened hook in a 5.0 or stepping up to that 6.0 if we want that additional strength in the hook. So again, we can rig it on our Headlocks HD jig head. We can rig it on our Revlox if we're wanting to add that flash and vibration to the plastic. We've got our big eyes option with that painted head with the big eye as an additional strike trigger. And we've also got that option of flicking and gliding that plastic through the shallows and snags on that Chinox SWS. So again, not just a snapper plastic for fishing deep. It's an extremely versatile plastic, these jerk shad style profiles, jerk bait profiles. Stepping from our five inch, we go to our seven inch. Some people are a bit scared when they step up to a seven inch, they're like, that's a big plastic. What is gonna eat that? The reality of it, you look at where the jig head sits in this plastic, and that's the bulk. The first half is the bulk of the plastic. The second half, it starts to taper rapidly towards the tail. So if you fold that over like a fish eating it, there's not much plastic actually in their mouth in that whole tail section because it narrows out fairly quickly. So, you know, a two kilo snapper, no problem. Eat this seven inch center jerk shad. So, so don't be afraid if you're looking for a larger profile, the bait's bigger, you're fishing deep, you want the fish to see it. Don't be afraid to step up to that seven inch center jerk shad. And in turn, we step up to a 7.0 Headlocks HD jig head. So again, that brutally strong mustard black nickel chemically sharpened hook. We've got that headlock keeper that's designed to lock those 10 times tough elastic plastics in place so our plastic doesn't slide on that jig head. And that 7.0 Headlocks HD jig head is a brutally strong hook. You can also fish the 8.0 in those seven inch center jerk shads. So 7.0 or 8.0 in that seven inch center jerk shad. Again, we've got the option of the Revlox. For example, here we've got a three quarter in a 7.0. There's also a one ounce in a 7.0. So there is some, a variety of options. We can fish it on that Headlocks HD. We can run it on that there. Or again, our big eyes if we're wanting that eye. So that 7.0 looks brilliant in that seven inch center jerk shad with that big eyes head attracting the fish and triggering strikes. So that's our seven inch center jerk shad very, very popular offshore. Again, don't be afraid to grab a, a 6.0 or an 8.0 Chinox SWS or even a Snake Locks jig head and fish that big plastic weedless. There's been a lot of big barra caught on that seven inch center jerk shad fishing it weedless in and around the snag. So, so don't be afraid to think out of the box, try things a little bit differently with, with all those jig heads options that you've got from TT Lewis. There's a bunch of different options. Uh, our eight inch, eight inch, Extremely popular in WA and also areas where guys are chasing a larger bait fish profile. So that's a big plastic, that eight inch Streaks XL. You can see the additional bulk in the body of that plastic. So if you really want that plastic to stand out, you want the fish to see it, you're looking for a larger profile, check out that eight inch. Again, a lot of tail section there that folds away. So no problem there catching, again, a two kilo snapper elite, that, that eight inch Streaks XL. So there we've got it rigged on an 8.0, fits beautifully on an 8.0 Headlocks HD. However, if you do need a bigger hook, you can step up to the Swimlocks, Headlocks Extreme. There's a bunch of jig heads there that we use in the larger plastics that can also fit this Streaks XL. But that's a great profile, of, especially once you start fishing deep, deep water and you really want the fish to see that plastic down around that 80 meters, 100 meters, 120 meters, and you're really looking for a big bulky plastic. Again, not just reefies, we can throw these big plastics at pelagic species as well. So that Streaks XL has caught a bunch of GTs, Spanish mackerel, uh, all sorts of different pelagic species that love eating a big bait fish. Finally, across the range here, we've got our biggest of our jerkbait style plastics in the Z-Man range, and that's the 10 inch Heroes. 10 inches of 10 times tough. That's a, that's a big, big plastic. I've seen it hanging out of the mouth of big reefies, seen it hanging out of the mouth of big pelagics, also awesome kingfish, epic tuna, stack of different species, GTs, eat them. And cool thing about them, I've caught some nice tuna on them on a high speed retrieve. So you can hop them, you can twitch them, you can do all that sort of thing with them. But if you wind them fast, again, they get a swimming action up on the plastic tail. So they look really cool in the water. I've caught a couple of nice tuna eating that plastic on a high speed retrieve. So jig head wise, big plastic. We need some big heads for that plastic. So here we've got it on a Headlocks Extreme in a Tenno. So that's a brutally strong mustard black nickel chemically sharpened hook. 
big, big strong hook for stopping big fish. That's in a tenno. We can also run it on our swim locks. So there's our swim locks tenno. Again, you can see plenty of hook exposure there on that big hook and that hook sits nice distance back in the plastic. We've also got with the swim locks the ability to attach a stinger hook on the underside of the head here. So here I've got a treble on there. Otherwise we can also use that additional attachment point, stainless steel point, nice and solid. We can run a stinger further down in the plastic if we want to. So some guys will run a single hook through and the hook will point out the bottom. So they'll have one out the top, one out the bottom, or they'll run assist hooks off the back of that plastic as well if they want more coverage in the plastic. A lot of the time the fish that eat these things are that big, it doesn't matter, they, they want to kill it so they'll find the hook. And that's on a, on a TT Lewis swim locks jig head. And finally the, the guys fishing the kingfish love these plastics fished up high in the water column. So they'll fish them on a 12-0 chin locks SWS. So again we've got that weight in the belly to keel the plastic. We can walk it across the surface, we can let it sink back and the fish will belt that. And because they're super soft and flexible and we've got plenty of hook clearance there, fish bites that and finds the hook. And that is a very, very strong hook, that 12-0 Chinlox SWS. So that's another way that you can fish them up high in the water column. You know, casting them around washes and that sort of thing for GTs and, and other species, working them through pelagics and again, chasing those kingfish on that large 10-inch heroes, 10 times tough. So it'll stand up to some brutal attacks from fish as well. So there you go. I hope that helps you with selecting and rigging a jerk bait style of plastic. If you haven't fished them before, you know, if you're a curl tail or you're a paddle tail guy, it might be worth grabbing some and giving them a go, especially on those days when it's a bit quiet. You know, for some reason the bite shut down, might be just after a full moon, slack tides, those sorts of things. It's always good to have a different plastic option in your kit to give it a try. So give those jerk bait style plastics a go, rig them up a couple of different ways, hop them and twitch them around in your local estuary and see how you go. For more rigging videos, details, lots of info and that sort of thing, check out tackletactics.com.au where you can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and get loads more videos and information on fishing soft plastics and also fishing the rest of the year in the range. All the best with the fishing. Cheers.